New Buddha Way Dhamma Talks. Jeff Hunt presents a talk on some aspect of the Buddha's teaching. Something that's pretty important in the teaching is to learn to spend more of our time in the present. But that's not actually the real meaning of the teaching, that you just feel better if you stay in the moment now and then. It's really uh, seeing the past, present and future being resolved in the present moment. Everything flows from the present moment. So that's a change of outlook. A change of outlook, a change of heart in that we understand that we are rather like a seed or an acorn which is growing. So we are always at a particular part in that growth process. So when we try to conceive the past or conceive the future, we are doing so from always from that moment. Everything is resolved in that moment. So when I try to conceive the future, I'm conceiving it from the standpoint of this moment. I can't do anything else. But I kid myself very often that somehow I can project myself out of this present moment and, and be in the future where I can solve certain problems, but certain risks and threats apparently appear, like ghosts and demons, in my head and cause a lot of agitation. Let's look at it from this, uh, with this metaphor of growth. If you think about an oak tree, at the moment oak trees are shedding their acorns. We've got some oak trees in our garden, we're lucky enough to have those. And of course we're getting bombarded with acorns. So there are lots of acorns about at the moment and it's a nice little um, metaphor for a point I want to make about this uh, change, change of outlook uh, and what it can do for you to resolve everything in the present moment. I use, I use that expression, resolve everything in the present moment, because it's, it would be a wrong teaching to say, don't have any concern for the future, or don't have any concern for the past. That's not the teaching. The teaching is to resolve everything, our conception of our past and our future, in the present moment. Right? This, this, this is the moment from which everything else uh, is sprouting. So if you look at the acorn, the acorn is at that moment in its life. It's not a tree, is it? And yet we say, it's going to be a tree. We think. <laughs> Maybe, probably, whatever that means, it will become a tree. But this, at this moment, it's a small seed, less than an inch across. And somehow, the whole of the life of the oak tree, in fact, the whole of the life of the oak forest, is contained in that little package. But in this moment, that's what it is. It is an acorn. It is not an oak tree. It is an acorn. And yet it is an oak tree, because in a sense, it's part of an ongoing process. It's not static. It's not separate from the tree from whence it's, it's come, and nor is it separate from the tree which it will be, nor is it separate from all other oak trees to which it is related, of course. It wouldn't make any sense just to think of one oak tree by itself going on propagating. That, wouldn't, that couldn't happen. So it's like that with us in that we tend to think of ourselves as separate entities. This is me. But just like the acorn, I am, in, I am just an expression of a point of growth. All my future and all my past and all my connections with all other life is packaged into this five foot eight body at the moment. But it's, it's in motion. It's moving. And in fact, it's never static. Just like the acorn is changing. And what are we doing when we project into the future and we worry about the future? We can spend a lot of time worrying about the future. We can be tormented by the future. What's going to happen to me? Will things get better for me? Will I be successful? Will I be able to pay my bills? Will I be loved? Will I have a partner or a better partner <laughs> in the future? Will I get sick? Will I meet a sudden end? Will I die slowly? Will I die in my 90s or in my 40s? 
we could spend a lot of time projecting ahead into a sphere that has no meaning and no life except as so, insofar as it is resolved in this present moment. Every, everything, that's, everything that will become the oak tree is packaged into that acorn and all its, all its interrelations. There's no such thing as an acorn just by itself. Okay, so, but somehow that acorn encapsulates every, everything about its future is resolved in the acorn. Everything about your future is resolved in where or what you are right now. Now, if you can see things in that way, first of all, it releases you from a lot of worry. Secondly, it empowers you because you realize that through this growth, this, this growth which is you, that is where your, fu your future is. Your future is a projection, if you like, a, a, an outgrowth of this present moment. But it's not deterministic in the sense that I have no choice. The acorn will become an oak. It would be very surprising if it became a plum tree or a bamboo. Well, there are some teachings on this issue that thorns don't grow on a fig tree and figs don't grow on a thorn tree. That's it, right? This is another way of saying that what you do now counts. If you have greedy, hateful thoughts, you will give rise to, to thorns. And if you have caring, understanding thoughts, you'll give rise to fruit. So this moment really counts. In fact, what else counts? Because you are that acorn at that moment, and the whole of your future is resolved in that moment and all its current interconnections. Despite the huge importance we give to our future, we are misguided. The huge importance should be attached to this present moment. Because you have freedom, which the acorn doesn't really have, being an acorn, you have freedom to grow in one way or another, personally, ethically, spiritually, whatever you want to call it. We know that bodily, you know, human beings tend to follow a certain trajectory, but if you think in terms of their moral life or their wisdom, they follow very different trajectories. And that trajectory is largely self-determining. But because of our lack of awareness, we don't understand that we can, through our self-awareness, our self-understanding, say, I will, make, I will go this way, not that way. Uh, this self-awareness thing, which is about uh, ultimately understanding that you are a point in your own growth and everything is resolved in that point. So this moment now, like whether you understand what I'm saying or not, could be really important to you. Right? How are you going to take it? You can reject it, accept it, think about it, contemplate on it, partly understand it, partly not understand it, ask me a question, do something about it. What I'm saying is that this moment is the only moment that really counts for you because the future does not yet exist. Well, that's, that's, that's a platitude, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> because that's what the future is. But we tend to project a lot of our concern, our worry, our thought, our effort into something called the future. But have you ever noticed that when this so-called future arrives, it's usually quite different from anything we might have envisaged? Twenty years ago, I would never, in my wildest dreams, imagined I would be sitting on a cushion in something called the Quiet Centre in Guildford, talking about, talking about these spiritual teachings. So you could be trapped by the future. You, you think, okay, this is my destination, and I'm going to get to that destination. Well, okay, if it's, uh, it depends what kind of destination it is. If it's a purely material, self-centered destination, you might be very, very disappointed because you're now clinging to a conception of your future over which you have very little control. So clinging to the future um, is pernicious. That is not to say that you shouldn't have any conception at all of where you... Because actually, in a sense, there's a, there's a kind of a deep contradiction in what I'm saying, isn't there? 
It's like I'm saying, don't cling to the future, and yet you do have some freedom to go this way rather than that way. But it's not really a contradiction because the kind of clinging I'm talking about is usually about gaining or getting something from the world, as though the world is something separate from me. That's the clinging to the future I'm talking about. Because we think of the world as being something separate from myself, and I can get or gain something from it. Which, of course, has a kind of distorted truth in it, but not clinging to the future means seeing how uh, fruitful my life is by, by developing it from the present. Everything is anchored in the present. Everything resolves itself in the present. And if you, if you link this up with all the other parts of the teaching about mindfulness, understanding of states of mind and so on, you will see that you are liberating yourself when you understand that you can take a fruitful path, or let's say a more fruitful path in life, or a less fruitful path in life. And by that I don't mean getting a PhD or winning the lottery, obviously. I mean growing as a person, you know, with understanding, with wisdom, with compassion for others, having a meaningful life, losing your fear of death, etc. The things that are really important to us Although for some reason, even though we know they're important for us, we keep burying them. And so what's really important is that I've got some qualification or that I've got a certain level of salary or whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying those things have no importance at all, but they should be seen from the right angle, in the right light. And that light comes from this moment, because that is where... You know, you don't you don't make choices in the in the future. You make choices where you are now. This is the choice. You can't make choices in the past. Where do you make? Where is the choice made? The choice is made right here now. So just think of that little acorn growing, and you're like that acorn. So it's as though yes, the future is somehow fuzzily sketched ahead of you, but you don't really know. I mean, how many acorns are actually eaten by squirrels instead? Some acorns grow into mighty oaks, some grow into small, small oaks. Some are lucky enough to be born perhaps in a, grow in a forest of other oaks, others a bit isolated. Uh, some get diseases and some don't. That is, that, is, that is the nature of our life too, right? But we have awareness. So we can make the most of, whatever, of that fleeting moment. We can make the most of that. By being kind to somebody, for example. By being patient when you're tested. By being kind to yourself and not and letting go of a worry. Right? The future is resolved in the present moment. So this is not to dismiss the future, say don't ever think about anything. And that that, that would in ordinary terms uh, that's okay, but it doesn't go very deep. What we are saying is that you are embedded in a process. The process isn't going on independently of you when you're watching it. You are the process. You are the process. And this is where we are in this, that process now, at this moment, together. So I'm not sitting here with Plato and Aristotle. I'm sitting here with you. We happen to be <laughs> on the same path together at this moment, okay? You see, it's a, cha it's, a, it's a shift in one's perspective on how you lead your life. You lead your life more simply, more fruitfully, with more self-awareness, with more uh, wonder, more awe, or A-W-E, at just being embedded in this amazing process of growth. And what is its source? Well, the, well funnily enough, the source is right there inside you. But as long as I keep projecting myself outwards, then I'm totally oblivious of that source, that source of growth. But when I just touch that source of growth, it's like a, it's like a miracle. Because then you realize that you are free, you have the potential free, you've just got to stop clinging to the future, clinging to the past. New Buddha way lets go of east and west and starts afresh in the life we have now. For more information, visit 
www.newbuddaway.org.